But uh, so a mate got in touch with me the other day and said he'd like me to help out with a project that he's doing. Uh, it's a plane that he's designing. Uh, it's the design's quite progressive. Uh, and he just wanted me to do some test prints of bits and pieces and just put it together and see how it goes. Um, it, it starts off with uh, a test piece. Uh, this is the test piece and basically this is about calibrating your printer to make sure that it's set up correctly as well as uh, setting the wall thickness um, a little bit higher than normal. This is lightweight PLA uh, but we're not printing your standard 0.4 because of the size of this model, uh, depending on the version, he's looking at doing two versions of um, one around about the 14, 1500 mil wingspan. Uh, the other one is about two meters. Um, so we want more strength uh, in the actual uh, design. So for that reason, the wall strength is a little bit thicker. It's quite an easy process. I've never done it before, um, but yeah, it was quite simple to do. The other side of that is also ensuring that your printer is calibrated correctly so that when it prints an 8mm hole, it's an 8mm hole and it's not an 8.2. So yeah, that's the test part. Um, I did a couple of those, they all came out quite good. That's, that one's actually a, a 0.4. This one's a bit thicker, this is about 0.8. Um, there is a subtle difference in there that you can see. And from there I moved on to some of the other components. So I started printing the fuselage next, uh, which consists of five parts, varying in sizes. One, two, three, four, five. I thought I lost one. So there's the five fuselage parts. Uh, as you can see, this is going to be quite large. What makes this special is not only that it's lightweight PLA, but the way that it's constructed. Um, there's a couple of really good advantages to this design. One is that some of these parts fit together like a normal design would. So fuselage 5 goes into fuselage 4 um, just by being inserted because there's a recess in it and you know the two surfaces marry up. You just glue that together and that's done. But when you look at fuselage 4 going into fuselage 3, uh, you've actually got a bulkhead which is printed separately. So this part's lightweight PLA, this is standard PLA. This part has some hooks which you insert into these holes which are also printed out of PLA. Um, and then this is then glued into the lightweight PLA part. And similarly on Fuse 3, it has one of these bulkheads or formers, whatever you want to call it, which, it, which is then glued into it. And the two, basically the hooks in one, hook into the other part. So, there's a couple of advantages to this. If you damage a section, uh, you can actually detach it, reprint it, and not have to reprint the entire fuselage or component because you know you destroyed it trying to take it apart. The other thing about it is because you might think, well, that's all good and well, but from a structural point of view, for the size of it, it might be a little bit under what's required. The next bit is that there's a carbon fiber tube which is inserted basically all the way through the frame. Once those two are locked together, that will just pass straight through from one to the other. This then gives the whole frame extra rigidity. Um, and that goes basically from the tail, which I can't put on because of this bottom bit, because it'll bit tail, up to the actual nose. It goes right through the nose and it stops around about there on the nose and that gives it a lot more strength. A couple of other things I really like about the design is normally when you print something like uh, an elevator or a control surface in a tower-like fashion, if you were to print this on its own, you would get a lot of banding through the part, um, which sometimes can be a bad thing. If, if the layer shift is bad enough, the part will be too weak to use. Because of the way it's been designed, and this is two halves of the horizontal stabilizer printed in, as one piece connected together with a bridge, these two parts help hold it stable as it's been printed. So you can achieve faster printer speeds and you end up with a better overall product. There is some slight 
slight banding in that that you can see, um, but it's actually pretty good for the size of it. Here's a couple of other parts. So here is uh, the elevator, and that one was printed in the same fashion. It's actually a little bit taller, but when you look at it, the surface quality of that, it came out extremely well. Um, I'm not quite sure why this one has that little bit of banding in it. Maybe I just need to give the rollers a bit of a clean um, and adjust a few things. But yeah, it's, it's a really good, unique way. So the other thing about lightweight PLA is that um, it sometimes needs a little bit of extra strength for, for some of the moving components. In relation to this design, when we look at things like the rudder, so there's obviously, this is half of it, sorry, the elevator, <laughs> that's the rudder. When you look at this, it's, um, there's some tube spots and other pieces, other holes for carbon fiber shafts and things like that to give it extra strength. What then happens is that where it's running through just lightweight PLA, that can wear. So what's been designed is you print out these PLA parts and they basically glue in to provide extra strength to the part as well as we've now got a much more solid hinge point for any, uh, any carbon fibre tubing that's going to run through there. And this basically helps join the two together. So on both of the elevator components, you have a part similar to that, which is glued in. Uh, these two components are the other half is then glued onto this and it has basically the exact same part, including the horn, so that um, you got a nice strong horn for the, for the elevator, um, as well as providing um, another little point for, for that carbon fiber rod. The rudder is similar, but not quite the same. Basically the rudder, so that's the tail fin. That's a good setup and that's the rudder. Um, there is a PLA piece which is printed that goes on that is basically uh, attached to the rudder and there's some locating holes on there that you can put some pins in so that you can glue and pin that together. So all of a sudden we've got a really nice strong surface um, that's going to cop a fair bit of wear and tear um, and basically there are some um, little hinge type bits that glue into the fin um, and then locate into those holes on that PLA part um, and a carbon fibre rod is inserted between the two to basically create a hinge point. And there's a bit of that um, in a lot of the high wear areas. So on the front of the, uh, this is, I call it the hood but it's not a car. There's another section where a little bit of PLA goes and it basically latches into um, the front of um, the plane. You can also see here there's a, there's a PLA front on it um, and that, that is there once again to provide a bit more strength. Also at the end of here this is actually, it is quite flexible. Um, the way it is and as soon as you put that in um, and the corresponding uh, former at the other end this actually becomes quite a strong part and that's before I put anything so there's a there's a obviously a, a firewall here for the motor um, and then there's a couple of other bits to secure that in as well but that becomes a very rigid very strong part and remembering that there's also the carbon fibre tube that slides through there and once again this is very similar to what we spoke about was section three and four. Um, basically, there'll be hooks in one of these formers and that will basically hook onto this section here and they'll then lock together when that rod's inserted. Um, once again, section two is very similar to the back in that section two just has um, a nice mating surface and it will then just made up with a uh, fuselage piece of three. If I can get the rod in. And that just slides in like that. So as you can see, this is the larger version. Uh,
And if you're an avid plane fan, you might be able to tell what plane this is. There's some other really cool things like the exhausts, which they've got recesses fitted for them. Um, yeah, lots of nice scale detail on it. A lot of these um, lines. So they're, they're not just aesthetic. Um, you'll find that they're actually quite good for creating strength as well. Um, you can see some of them, the fuselage. Um, yeah, that creates a little bit of strength as well, adds to that. So, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm yet to print the wing out. That'll probably be the thing I do next. Um, and I'll throw another video together of actually assembling this. Won't be a lot of talking in it. Um, yeah, it'll be fairly straightforward. Watch, throw some music in it, and just maybe talk over some of the some of the um, key things that you need to do. There are a couple other things. So there's a part that goes over the rear window, which creates a hatch to get into servos and things. Um, there's also there's a hole here to run your servo leads from your wings. So it's got uh, flaps and ailerons. There's actually a part that you can print out which then ensures that they make it all the way so that the wires go all the way through into the cavity. Um, the wing is removable, but there's nothing worse than you know losing a cable inside. So there is a part that gets it that you print that actually goes from here down inside here so that you know if you need to insert something through it, it's just a matter of putting it through and it's there. Anyway, um, stay tuned for the uh, next video where I'll um, yeah, start putting it together. Thanks for watching.